Hey everybody, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. I'm John, YouTube channel just passed 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it's pretty incredible to see 10,000 of you have clicked that subscribe button uh, over the past couple of years. Let's keep going. I would love to hit 20,000 by the end of the year. Probably not going to happen, uh, but it'd be amazing. And also thanks so much for everyone that has been uh, supporting me through Patreon. I've been able to purchase a bit more gear recently helped me pay for my time to dedicate some time to producing videos for this channel. So thank you guys so much. So in this video, I will be answering five questions from the audience. Uh, here's question one. Mike Pfeiffer writes in, been a Pro Tools user for 15 years, tips to make the transition easier. I've been meaning to do an article or a video on some common things that you need to know about Reaper if you're coming from other uh, DAWs like Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic. I haven't done that yet, but this is kind of just off the top of my head uh, what you need to know. The first is just to realize that it's a different program. It's made by different people with different ideas. Your old DAW might have some great ideas and you can implement a lot of those things into Reaper uh, without really changing your workflow, but you should be open to trying things in a different way. There are so many ways to do pretty much everything inside Reaper. So um, knowing a few ways to, let's say, export files or to rename items or to create sends. All these different things have multiple ways of being done and it's up to you to figure out what works best for you. One of the first things that I do when I set up a Reaper install is configure the zooming and scrolling. I've got a video on how I do that exactly. After that, it's really important to understand your file management. So knowing where your project files will be stored, where your fade files and any other uh, temporary files like auto backups are saved and where they're configured inside the preferences. I have videos on all those topics as well. You can find links in the description. There's also an article that I wrote for a sound effects blog. I think it's called five tips to get the most out of Reaper. And it's kind of a collection of all these beginner things um, that are really, really important. There are so many other things to touch on with this. Uh, the main thing is just realizing that it, it is a different program and it's not going to be exactly the same. These other programs wouldn't change to be more like Reaper. So it's kind of unreasonable to think that Reaper can change to be more like Pro Tools or anything like that. And as always, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one lessons. If you have specific questions and problems that you need solved, I can do that over Skype and solve your problems directly. So uh, check the website for links to that. Next question comes from Justin McLeod. What is free item positioning? How is it useful? And can it only be accessed by the mouse? Free item positioning is a mode that you can set for a track and it lets you layer items without overlapping them. So which is kind of a weird thing. There's a little handle on the item so that you can resize it vertically within the same track and you can drag it up and down. It's really interesting thing that you don't see in any other program. It's not the most useful thing, but there are some times when uh, you want to have multiple items that are layered, but you don't want to um, put in a crossfade. Uh, it works with audio and MIDI items. It's also available through the action list. You can toggle that on and off, set it to on or off. I don't think you can resize or move the items without using the mouse. But as I said, it's, it's not something that you really need because we have unlimited tracks. You can just layer those items on different tracks, but sometimes you have a specific effects chain and you just want to have a bunch of items on one track going through that effects chain. And it's kind of a neat way of doing it. Question from Yuri. What would you recommend for a VST plugin bundle at around $200? I really like to support the smaller developers, the ones that are just basically one guy making all the plugins. Uh, Valhalla DSP uh, for reverbs, Tone Boosters for uh, their essential plugin bundle. There's a bit of overlap with Reaper's built-in plugins, but a lot of the uh, individual Tone Boosters plugins are great, like Realbus, the EQ that comes in the uh, Ascent Track Essentials bundle is really nice as well. Um, and, and that's something like $60. I also really like what Boz Digital is doing. Some really interesting and unique ideas. So I like to support him as well. Klanghelm has some great plugins as well. A really great uh, metering plugin called VMMT. He's got some really cool uh, compressors. 
I, I don't really think you can go wrong with any plugin bundle these days. I, everything sounds good. Everything sounds great these days. Uh, $200 is not a lot of money to spend on plugins, but you could also find almost anything for free these days as well. So it's, it's really tricky to make a definitive list of what to buy. Mix and match from a bunch of different companies. But nothing sounds bad anymore. So it's just a matter of, you know, finding the right balance of price and features. That's probably not a great answer to that question, and I'm sorry. Maybe you guys in the comments could uh, list your favorite uh, bundles or effects to buy for $200 to get your EQ and compression and tape saturation and modulation effects and all that stuff kind of bundled up in one package. Uh, it'd be cool to see what you guys pick. Next question comes from Brent Roos regarding Django's sequencing drums tutorial uh, that we put up last week. He asks, how is your method different than loading a sample in Resample-Matic 5000 and editing the arrangement through the MIDI editor? So this question was originally for Django. He's already answered in the comment section. I'm gonna give it my two cents on this. It really comes down to whether you prefer working with MIDI or whether you prefer working with samples in the arrange view. There's no right or wrong way with that. You can do whatever feels right at the time. Every song is gonna be different. There are a lot of benefits to using MIDI and there's a lot of benefits to using samples in the arrange view. With MIDI, if you're gonna play it in on a keyboard or a drum pad, that makes sense. If you have your sounds picked and you know exactly the pattern you wanna put them in, you can just drop them into the arrange view and it's really simple. You don't have to worry about multi-output routing or doing everything in the MIDI editor. It's nice to be able to see all the sounds and you can do some interesting things like changing the snap offset so that when you're layering the sounds, they um, are copying, pasting and stuff like that. They start at different places. It's a little tricky to set that up and to see the relationships between the different instruments um, inside of a sampler. It's also really easy to make timing adjustments and uh, adding effects to individual drum hits um, right in the arrange page. You just drag and drop an effect onto that one hit. You don't have to worry about doing any automation or anything like that. It's also really great for seeing your phase relationships between the different kick drums that you have layered. Um, you can see them visually and where they stack up. Put them in a folder and you actually see where the waveforms overlap or where they're not and you can adjust things like that. It's a lot harder to do that inside of Sampler where you can only see one sample at a time. But the downside of working like that in the range view is that there's no velocity adjustment. You have to do it with item volume. So a lot of the realism is taken out, but for EDM, maybe that doesn't matter at all. Uh, maybe you want every kick to be exactly the same. There is, of course, ways you can automate that, um, ways you can manipulate plugins to fake that Maybe I can do a, a video more specifically on what you can do with um, items in the range view or benefits of using items in the range view rather than MIDI. Uh, I think that would be an interesting video, but uh, it's not ready yet. The last question comes from Jaggy. Whenever I render in Reaper, the quality is noticeably quieter and nowhere as good as what I've actually mixed. I've tried rendering in MP3, Wave, and FLAC. The quality is the same for each one. Can you please offer any advice on how to solve this? So most likely it's user error, not something that's wrong with Reaper. There are a bunch of things that could have gone wrong. You could have really weird routing where some of your tracks aren't going to the master, but they're in your monitors. Uh, that's possible if you put in a hardware send instead of a track send. Uh, so it's going directly to your monitors instead of going through the master effects chain and into your mix. Uh, another possibility is that you have something in your uh, monitoring effects chain that is affecting the mix, but is not being printed to the mix. So it could be level changes. It could be, I don't know, maybe you have a master bus compression or limiter on there. I and mean, that's not going to be applied to your mix because it's the monitoring effects chain. Another thing that's possible is that it's just a matter of volume change. You might have your master send on your master track to your output, not at Unity. So if you push that up by 12 dB, that's sending a, a stronger signal to your speakers, but it, or actually your audio interface, but it's not actually applying 12 dB of gain to your mix. So you're hearing it loud when you're in Reaper playing your mix, but your actual output to a file is going to be 12 dB lower. 
Finally, there could be uh, some plugins that are working in demo mode and they don't get rendered. Or there's just some plugins that are broken. So those are the different things kind of off the top of my head that could go wrong. Routing, plugins, uh, plugins in the wrong place that are affecting the sound, but not rendering in the mix, and your master output send. Those are the things that are probably going wrong with your project. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for sending in the comments. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon, sharing these videos with your friends, helping grow this community around Reaper. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support with Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.